Hey, this is test one, unit 5b study guide video. Okay, so problem one, determine if x minus nine is a factor of this polynomial, show your work. So previously, earlier in the year, we would try to do some kind of factoring with a box to try to figure out what the factors are, and we would be able to see if x minus nine is one of them. And then after we factor it, normally they would ask us to find something called x-intercepts, where we would simply go x minus 9 equals 0, and we would add 9 to both sides and see that, oh, hey, the x-intercept is 9. This time, they're having us see if this particular factor is one of the factors that make this polynomial. So in another way, they're asking is 9 an x-intercept? That's what they're really kind of asking us. Now, if we know the factor gives us an x-intercept, all x-intercepts have something in common. And that is the y value of the x-intercept is 0. So if I know that x equals 9, if I were to solve x minus 9's factor, if I plug the 9 into the x and I get the answer of 0, then I know I have an x-intercept. Therefore, I know I have a factor. So all I'm going to do is take the 9. Once again, you're always like switching that sign like you see over here. And I'm going to plug it into x. So all my x's are going to turn into 9's. And we're going to use our calculator to do this. Please be careful when you're typing things into a calculator. So when I'm typing the first part in, I have negative 5, parentheses 9, with an exponent of 4. I'm going to get negative 3, 2, 8, 0, 5. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the 55 parentheses 9 with an exponent of 3. I'm going to get positive 4, 0, 0, 9, 5. Then I'm going to do negative 81 parentheses 9 squared. And I'm going to get negative 6, 5, 6, 1. And then I'm going to do negative 75 times 9. That's going to give me minus 675. And then I have my negative 54. Now I'm simply going to take these numbers and put them into my calculator. Negative 32805 plus 40095 minus 6561 minus 675 minus 54. And I get the number 0, which means I have an x-intercept. 9 comma 0. Therefore, this right here does give, does prove that this is a factor of the polynomial. Factors, we get x-intercepts from factors. Therefore, if we can prove something is an x-intercept, we can prove that that's a factor. So down below it says, then complete the statement x minus 9 is or is not a factor of this polynomial. We just proved that it is because we got a 0. If you get a 0, it's a factor. If you don't, it's not a factor. Problem number 2. They just want us to divide and they want us to show our work. So we are using long division. Now in class you might learn another type of division called synthetic, but you can't do that here. You can only do long division because our degree is bigger than 1. So our exponent here is a 2. We have to do long division. So we're going to set it up. We're going to have x squared plus x minus 2. And we're going to have our divide. We're going to have x to the fourth minus 3x squared, sorry, 3x to the third plus x squared plus 4x minus 5. So we're going to go through this process. We're going to ask ourselves, what times x squared gets me 
x to the fourth? Well, x squared times x squared gets me x to the fourth. I always want these two to be the exact same thing. Now notice how I lined up x squared over the x squared. I do that because I'm, that will help me know when to finish. I'm going to finish when I use all the space over here, okay? Now I'm going to continue with that. I'm going to take this x squared that I have up here. Now I'm going to times it to the x. So x squared times x is x to the third. So I have plus x to the third. And then I'm going to take x squared and I'm going to times it to negative 2. So I'm going to have negative 2x squared. Now there's no more numbers for me to take this x squared and times it. So now I'm going to do something you're going to do all the time in these types of problems. I am going to switch my signs. And then I'm going to combine like terms. So I have x to the fourth minus x to the fourth. So they cancel out. You always want them to cancel out. I have negative three x to the third minus th uh, one more. So I'm gonna have negative four x to the third. Now I have one x squared plus two x squared. So that's three x squared. Then I'm gonna take the next term that's, that's here and I'm gonna drop it down. So I have four x. Now I'm going to go through this process again. I'm going to ask myself what number times x squared gets me negative 4x to the third. Negative 4x. Negative 4x times x squared makes negative 4x to the third. Once again, I always want these to be the same. Now I'm just going to keep multiplying that negative 4x. So negative 4x times x is negative 4x squared. 4x times negative 2 is going to be positive 8x. Once again, just like before, I'm going to switch all my signs. So this will turn to a positive, a positive, and this is now going to be a negative. And now I'm going to start combining like terms. The negative 4x to the third plus positive 4x to the third is going to cancel out. That one should always cancel out. Then we're going to have negative 3x plus 4x uh, squared. That's going to give me 7x squared. 4x plus 8x is 12x. I'm going to take my last number. I'm going to drop it down. And I'm going to go through that process one more time. I'm going to ask myself what number times x squared is going to get me 7x squared that, down here. Well, that would be 7. 7 times x squared is 7x squared. Then I'm going to continue. 7 times x is 7x. 7 times negative 2 is negative 14. And once again, now that I've done all that, I'm going to switch my signs. And my 7x squared and minus 7x squared, those are going to cancel out. 12x take away 7x is 5x. Negative 5 plus 14 is going to give me positive 9. Now, I can't continue any further because you'll notice that I ran out of space up here. Also keep in mind that notice how they all line up. The seven lines up with a five, those are constants. Four X lines up with a four X, those both have X's, those have X squareds. So once I fill up that whole top to the end, I know I'm done, which means I have an answer that we write like this. X squared minus four X plus seven plus, this is where we write our remainder. Our remainder is down here, five X plus nine, all over what we were dividing by, x squared plus x minus 2. And this is our answer. All right, problem three, determine the remainder when 
this polynomial is divided by x minus 5. So this time, they're asking us to figure out what the remainder is. Well, there's a few different ways to do this. Since this is a linear factor, we're dividing by x to the first power, we can use synthetic division. Or you can use long division like you did in problem two. I'm going to show an example of synthetic division so you can see both ways of doing division. To do synthetic division, we simply ask ourselves what number minus 5 would equal 0. That's positive 5. You could also work it out algebraically where you set it equal to 0, you solve it out, and that's the number I'm going to divide this polynomial by. I'm going to write 5. And I make myself a nice long L. And I'm going to take all these terms here, the 8, the negative 33, the negative 25, and the negative 50, and write it like this. Notice how I removed all the x's. I'm always going to do that for synthetic division. I am then going to take the very first term. I'm going to drop it below the L. So I have an 8 there. Then I'm going to take the 5. I'm going to multiply it to the 8. That's going to give me 40, and I'm going to put that right here. That's a positive 40. A positive 5 times a positive 8 is positive 40. Now I'm going to do the math. Negative 33 plus 40 is positive 7. So I'm going to put a 7 underneath my L. I'm going to do this process again. I'm going to go 5 times 7. That gets me positive 35. Now I'm going to combine the negative 25 and the 35. That gives me positive 10. I'm going to go ahead and do the process one more time. 5 times 10 is 50. We're going to go ahead and combine negative 50 plus 50. That's 0. Oops, sorry. So now to figure out what number here is the remainder. When you divide by a linear, when you divide by a linear, the degree of this polynomial drops down by 1. So down here in red, this is going to drop down by 1. Instead of being x to the third, it's x to the second. The 7 is positive, so it's plus 7x plus 10. There's no x here because it goes x squared, x, then no x. And so you have this extra number here, the 0. That is our remainder. So we are looking for this guy. He's our answer. That's the remainder. Therefore, letting us know, since it's 0, that x minus 5 is a factor. Number 4. So this is really going to test your ability to pay attention to the details. You're, being, you're going to be dealing with some multiplication, some combining like terms, make sure you're copying your problems down correctly. Okay, that's going to be a big thing you want to pay attention to. And make sure you're paying attention to what equations they want you to put where. So for the first part, we are going to create the equation b of x. And we are doing that by doing a whole bunch of math right here. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to multiply 2 to rx. So rx is 3 minus 4x, and that's getting times by 2. That's what I wrote it like that. Then I have a subtraction sign, so I'll put a subtraction sign. Anytime I put a subtraction sign, the next thing that I write, I, I want to put it in parentheses, and that's going to remind me to distribute that subtraction sign. So I'm subtracting t, so now I want to put t in those parentheses. So t is 2x plus 3x squared plus 2. Then I have a plus m. Our m is 3x to the fourth minus 9x to the third plus x minus 4. So the next thing we want to do, we want to take care of anything with these parentheses. Now you'll notice in the first part we have a 2 in front of parentheses. That's distributive property. We're going to multiply the 2 to each number in that parentheses. So 2 times 3, that's 6. 2 times negative 4x is negative 8x. 
Now we move to the next set of parentheses, we have the black ones. We have a negative. We are distributing that negative sign into this set of parentheses. So a negative times a positive 2x is negative 2x. A negative times a positive 3 is a negative 3x squared. Negative times positive 2 is negative 2. And then we have the last polynomial, which is just having an addition. So we can just leave it the way it is. And then we're going to go ahead and combine like terms. So I'm going to combine all the constants. So 6, negative 2, and a negative 4. That's going to get combined. I'm going to combine all the x's. So we're talking negative 8x, negative 2x, and 1x. Then I'm going to go ahead and combine. Uh, looks like nothing else. So this is x to the third, this is x to the fourth, and that's x squared. So nothing else can combine. So we're going to start cleaning this up. When we write our answer, we want to do it in standard form. So the highest exponent goes first. So that's going to be our uh, 3x to the fourth is going to be the first term in our answer. After the fourth is the third, so I'm going to have minus 9x to the third. Then we'll have negative 3x squared. And now we got to get to some of that combining. So we have a negative 8x in blue, minus two more x's, and then I add one. So negative 8 minus 2 is negative 10, plus 1 is negative 9x. Now we're going to combine our constants. That's the highlighted in green. We have 6. We take away 2. That is 4. 4 take away 4 more is 0. So this is the equation for b of x. Okay, part b for number 4. Same type of problem, but the only real difference is this time they're letting us know what they want x to be. So this is going to be kind of following your order of operations. PIM dash, if you remember that. So starting off, we have 2 times r, where the x for r is a 1. So I'll have 2 times our r equation, which is going to be 3 minus 4. And our x that we have here is really going to be a 1, because that's what they're telling us it is right there. So I'm going to do that math first, following my order of operations. I'm going to start inside the parentheses. I'm going to do multiplication before I do anything else. So I'm going to do this negative 4 times 1. So I get negative 4. And then 3 take away 4 is negative 1. And then 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Then I'm going to bring down that subtraction sign it tells me it wants to do. Next thing I'm going to do is 3 times t, where x is 2. So I'm going to have 3 parentheses. My t, uh, for t, all the x's are going to be 2's. So I have 2 times 2. I have 3 times 2 squared plus 2. Once again, following PIM dash, I'm going to be doing all the math inside the parentheses. So 2 times 2, that's 4. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 3 is 12 plus my 2. Continue to work inside the parentheses. 4 plus 12, that's 16. 16 plus 2 is 18. And then 18 times 3 is 54. Next thing I'm going to have is a plus sign, like so. And that's from here. And then I have m, where x is 0. So all the x's for m are going to be 0. So 0 to the 4th power is 0. And 0 times 3 is 0. 0 to the 3rd power is 0. 0 times negative 9 is 0. 
then we have 0 and then a minus 4. So 0 plus 0 plus 0 minus 4 is negative 4. So now we're just going to do the math here. We have negative 2 subtract 54 plus negative 4. That's going to give us the answer of negative 60. Okay, the table shows different values for the function. So we have this big old function up here, and then the table showing us a whole bunch of different values. Now, a better way to describe these values is coordinates. These are points. Remember, when you look at something like this, what's inside the parentheses is the x, what it equals is the y. So in reality, that is a point, negative 1, comma, 0. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to convert these all into actual points so they're easier to see for us. All right, so now we can kind of see them as points, which is going to make this just a little easier. It says rewrite a of x, which is this equation up here, as a product of linear factors. This is what we were calling in class the factor theorem. They just want us to write our x-intercepts as factors. So looking through our points, we want to identify every x-intercept. And remember, x-intercepts always have the y value of 0. So I'm looking at all these points. I'm looking for a y value of 0. I have one here. No, no. I have one here. No, no. I have one here. No, yep, and yep. So I've now identified all the x-intercepts. To write them as factors, it's pretty easy. It's a sign switch. So if I'm going to write this as in factored form, so I have my a of x equals my first parentheses. This is a negative 1 up here. It's going to be x plus 1. Notice how I just switched the sign. Then for my next factor, I have uh, a 0 for the x. So I have x plus 0. Then I have, next one, x plus seven because it was a nay of seven so it turns to a positive seven here i have nay, i have two comma zero so that's going to be x minus two and then here i have a five so it's x minus five now to kind of clean this up this isn't tech, you don't have to do this but this is a good rule of thumb for people who are going to do a lot of math in their life we really don't write x plus zero x plus zero is just x so we usually put that one in the front of the problem then we rewrite the rest. So it looks like this. This is the proper way to write a final answer. But technically the one above is the same thing, and I wouldn't mark you wrong for that. Number six. This is asking us to list the possible rational roots. Now this is the one I always tell you about the P and the Q. This is about making that list of factors, dividing them, and you're going to have a whole long goofy list. So once again, our Q is the leading coefficient. It's the number that's in front of the highest exponent. It should be the very first number you see. The P is the constant. That's the one without a variable. Now we're going to write the factors of P on top, Q on the bottom. So our P is a 2, our Q is a 6. And we're going to list out the factors. Now remember, the factors are the numbers that multiply to be 2, the numbers that multiply to be 6 in this particular problem. So numbers that multiply to be 2 is 1 times 2. Don't forget your plus and minus signs. Same thing for our 6. 1 times 6. But it also has 2 times 3. Those are all the numbers that multiply to be 6. But that's not your answer. We need to make a list. To do that, we're going to start with the first number in the numerator. 
and we're going to divide it by the first number in the denominator. So 1 divided by 1 is 1. I'm going to stick with the 1 in the numerator because I have more numbers in the denominator. I'm now going to divide 1 by 2. That's going to give me a fraction of 1 over 2. Now I'm going to do the same thing here. 1 divided by 3. Then 1 divided by 6. Now there's no more numbers that I can divide 1 by in my denominator. So I have finished with the number 1. So now I'm going to move on to the number 2 in the numerator. So now I'm going to go 2 divided by 1, which is going to get me plus and minus 2. Then 2 divided by 2, but 2 divided by 2 is 1. I already have that number. Do not write it again. You already have it. Write it just once. All right, we're going to do 2 divided by 3, so that's 2 thirds. And then 2 divided by 6. But keep in mind that 2 over 6 reduces to 1 third. You already have that number. You don't need to write it again. Therefore, you have now made the list of possible rational roots. Remember, roots is just a fancy word that means x-intercepts. So that means there's a few numbers in here that are actually x-intercepts. You don't have to find out which ones they are. You just have to make the list like you see here. Problem number seven. Factor x to the third plus x squared minus 14x minus 24 completely given that x minus 4 is one of the factors. So they're telling you that they gave you one answer and they want you to find the rest. We're trying to find all the factors. Now, the question is, well, how many factors are there? The amount of factors you have is based on the highest exponent you have. So since the biggest exponent is three, I should have three factors when I'm done. So the question is, well, how do we tackle something like this? Well, we need to make our polynomial much smaller. It's kind of big right now. There's four terms. I want to shrink that down. And one way I can do that is by using division. So I'm going to use synthetic division. So I'm going to go take my x minus 4, I'm going to set it equal to 0, and I'm going to solve for x. Once again, it's just that sign switch I always tell you about. If it's x minus 4, switch your sign, so it's x equals 4. And I'm going to divide the polynomial by 4 by using synthetic division. So keep in mind, there is a number in front of x to the third. It's an invisible one. And the same thing in front of x squared. So for my, long, for my synthetic division, I'll have a 1, a 1, a negative 14, and a negative 24. So I'm going to take the first number inside the L, and I'm going to drop it down. And now I'm going to go one, uh, 4 times 1, which is 4. Well, 1 plus 4, that's going to give me 5. I'm going to multiply again 4 times 5 is 20. Now I have a negative 14 and a plus 20, so when I combine those, I get 6. So now 4 times 6 is 24. Going to combine, negative 24 plus 24 is 0. Now, as mentioned in one of the earlier problems, when we divide, the highest exponent goes down by 1. So the 1 that I see here in purple is really going to be 1x squared because it went down 1. It was a 3, now it's a 1. Sorry, it's a 3, now it's a 2. So 1x squared plus 5x plus 6 with the remainder of 0. So now we have a much smaller polynomial to work with. But now that I have this smaller polynomial, I need to figure out what are the factors of this smaller polynomial. Well, I can do this. There's two ways, in fact. You could do it by factoring, which is what I would definitely recommend doing. You could also use the quadratic formula and then work backwards to make your factors if factoring is hard for you. Um, but we're going to go with the box in this problem. So I'm going to make my box. 
the x squared goes up here, the 6 goes down here, the 5x goes out here. These two, x squared times 6 is 6x squared. Remember, we need to figure out two numbers that multiply to be 6x squared, and those same two numbers are going to combine to be 5x. So two numbers that multiply to be 6 would be 2x and 3x, and 2x plus 3x is going to equal 5x. So our two values that go in these two boxes is a 3x and a 2x. So to get the outsides, I know that x times x is x squared, and x times 3 is 3x, and x times 2 is 2x, and 2 times 3 is 6, so I know it works. So my last two factors are x plus 2 and x plus 3. Now I've found all of my factors. Number 8. They want us to factor. These are some old review problems from last quarter. Factoring is so important. That's why you're going to see it show up on like almost every test there is. So as a reminder how to do this kind, we have x to the fourth minus 625. We have two terms and we have a minus sign in the middle. This is a good clue that this is probably a difference of squares. We want to take each term and square root it. So essentially, we're going to do some math, and then we're going to end up with two parentheses, one with a plus sign, one with a minus sign. Now, to get the values in front and behind these signs, we're going to do square rooting, because this is a difference of squares. So I'm going to square root x to the fourth. Well, to do that, keep in mind, if you are square rooting x to the fourth, you simply take the four and you divide it by the root. This, the index here, the 2. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. So x squared will go here, and x squared will go here. I'm going to do the same thing with 625. I'm going to ignore the minus sign. That's letting me know I need a plus sign and a minus. I can go to my calculator and find out what the square root of 625 is, which is going to be 25. Now, once again, if you're wondering how to do that in your calculator, if you've forgotten, if you're using one of mine, you're going to hit the second button. And then you're going to hit the should be the x squared button, if I remember correctly. That's going to give you this symbol in your calculator. Once you see that, then you just type in 625, hit enter, and it's going to give you the answer 25. And that's the number that goes here and here. So as we start looking closer at these problems, you're going to notice, hmm, I think I can factor more. I can actually see that I have another difference of squares here, and I have a sum of squares for the first one. So set of parentheses, set of parentheses. I can, once again, square root this. The square root of x squared is just x. I will have a plus and a minus sign. The square root of 25 is 5, but with a difference, with a sum of squares, don't forget your i. Remember, this is going to give you imaginary answers for the sum of squares. It's something you may have forgotten about. We spent a little time on it last quarter, but here's a little review. Now, if we do the, the next, the difference of squares over here for this x squared minus 25, once again, we're going to have a plus and a minus. We're going to square root x squared, which is just going to give us x and x. The square root of 25, it's 5, but since it's a minus, you don't need the i's. It's going to be like this. And now your problem is completely factored. Okay, our last problem. Once again, this is asking us to factor. We have three terms, so I'm probably going to need my box. But looking at it a little closely, I notice they all have an x, 
and I know 3 can multiply to give me 15, and I think 3 can multiply to give me 72, and it does, which means I have a GCF. They have a common value of 3, so I'm going to pull a 3 out, and I'm going to pull an X out because they share all of those things. So now I'm going to write down my new quadra, uh, my new trinomial. 3, uh, 3x times x squared would give me 3x squared. 3x times negative 5x would get me negative 15x. And then 3x times negative 24 gets me negative 27x. Now that I have done the GCF factoring, I'm going to use the box on my trinomial. Once again, the x squared will go here, the negative 24 goes here, the negative 5x goes here. I'm going to multiply the x squared and the negative 24x. And once again, I'm trying to figure out two numbers that multiply to be negative they have 24x, but are going to add to be they have 5x. Hmm. I believe it's going to be negative 8x times 3x. That gets me they have 24x squared. And negative 8 plus 3x is negative 5x. So those will go inside our boxes. Now to get the outside, I know x times x makes x squared x times 3 is 3x, and x times negative 8 is negative 8, and then negative 8 times 3 is negative 24. So now I have 3x, I have x minus 3, sorry, x minus 8, and x plus 3. Now I've completely factored.